Welcome to another episode of Chats with Jay. On today's episode, we have a special guest all the way from the United States of America, Alabama State to be precise. This episode is sponsored by Juzan Glam, JPixel Studios, and Matt Concept. Without much ado, let's jump straight into today's episode. Welcome to Chat with Jay, Ambassador Dr. Charles Dickens. How are you doing, Justice? I'm very well. And yourself? Wonderful. Good. You are welcome to Ghana as well. We want to know who Dr. Charles Dickens is. I'm a native of the United States of Alabama. I was born, raised in Alabama. All my life, a city of Bessemer, Alabama. Got married to the love of my life, Queen Smith Diggins. We have one son, uh, Charles Lanier Diggins, the second. We had one other son who uh, is deceased. Uh, I do music across the nation, the United States. Well, I guess I say the world now, since I'm in Ghana. And uh, I do music. I, I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher who happens to be a musician. And I do a lot of outreach ministry. In fact, that's what brought me here to Ghana. Wow. We have a lot of African countries, but why Ghana? This is the door that the Lord opened up for me. I saw a vision and I talked with a friend of mine and the Lord led him to connect me with Apostle Courage Kobe. And, uh, and the rest is history, I'm here. Like to know what inspired your music career. I was too young to know other than hearing music and watching people play the piano. Nobody really, really in my family, uh, well, my older sister, she played, she's deceased, but I didn't see her play because she started at her early age and she stopped and picked it back up later years when I began to play. But it was just being at church. I always wanted to be a singer. I always wanted to be a musician. Ever since I've known myself and I prayed and the Lord opened the door. So here I am. Have you tried any of our local dishes? Oh, that's all I've been eating. The only thing I ate that I've been here uh, almost a week. It'll be a week tomorrow. And the only thing that I've eaten American was church. Uh, I was about to say church chicken. <laughs> KFC, and I would prefer the African dishes over that. Wow. wow. I saw flyers of, of you online, which mm -hmm. means you came for um, an event in Ghana. How did it go? And, and which, which church did you visit? I was at Prophetic uh, Voice okay. International. That's who hosted me, mm -hmm. Apostle, um, Apostle Courage Covey's who worked. Okay. Um, I did a workshop, a two-day workshop. I did a workshop uh, Thursday, and I did uh, a workshop worship service Sunday evening. Okay. And I went to, I, I can't say the word, but home. Okay, boom. Oh, oh, in the oh. Eastern region, yeah. Yes. I went to that church with Prophet uh, Bright, and I tell you, it was a, I did a revival over there. And uh, I want you to know that out of all of it, even though I did the revival, God revived me. Wow. Yeah, wow. God revived me. Even though I did the workshop, the workshop blessed me. The worship service, the participants, uh, all the participants, they poured out of their spirits, their, whole, their, their souls, and, and it blessed me. I, it inspired me, the musicians, uh, everybody. Wow. From what you said, you, you meant you. You came for a revival, but then you had the revival yourself. Yes. Wow, exactly. that's, that's great. Yes. How, how did that happen? Prayer. Prayer. Much sincere prayer. And being in a place where everybody was on one accord. And when we are on a one accord, and we're on one accord for the right reason, that's when the presence of God manifests itself. And I felt the manifestation of God even when I stepped into power. 
off the airplane. I felt the presence of God in this place. And when I got to the church, I it was it was it was greater evidence that God was warranted in the place to be praised and worshiped. And more so worship than praise because praise is a is a relation. That means that praise is an experience, but worship is a relationship. So it signified that there was great uh, relationships with the people and God. Well, let's let's go back to your, your coming. When you got to the, the airport, did you have any issues with immigration? Not one, not one problem at all. Okay, okay. It was a quick process. Uh, the persons, the staff at the uh, airport, they were very welcoming and embracing, helping in every way. I felt like I was a king of uh, something. Wow. Which, which means the perception about Ghana and Africa in general is different from the outside world. Well, I never heard anything about, well, let me step back. Ghana is the place that I really wanted to come because I've heard more I heard things that made me desire to come here. I found, I was told by other persons who traveled to Ghana, who lived in Ghana, who worked and did extensive work here, that Ghana is a place that is much more embracing than other places. So that's the first place I had a desire to come and did not know that God would send me here to uh, do the mission. So, in the course of, of your mission, what were the challenges you, you faced? I felt no challenges in Ghana, none whatsoever. I did have to get used to having an interpreter first night I preached. <laughs> that, like, I wasn't ready for that. But I learned to go on and do what you got to do, and God will do what he needs to do with yeah. the interpreter. So, uh, but I had no challenges at the, for the workshop, the preaching. Uh, experiences or the preaching uh, services. The only problem I had, the only problems I had, was getting to God. I was supposed to come for someone else. Wow. And the Lord never would let me have peace Why? with the situation. And you know, God has a plan. I knew God had led me to come. I bought my ticket. I then began to not only have problems with the people going back and forth, changing the dates, and um, I was going to have to go and spend astronomical amounts of money mm -hmm. to change my plane dates for them, and the, I just told God, God fix this, if you don't want me to go, you told me to go, if you change your mind, uh, it's all right with me, and God allowed a good friend of mine in the U.S. to uh, connect me with uh, Apostle Courage Kobe. And I had already talked with Apostle and I was going to go over and try to do some type of ministry with him. But the other people did not want me to do anything but what they wanted me to do at their church. And they wanted me to not go and participate in anything else. But the Lord wanted me to be free and this was of God. Now I had a problem with the visa, immigration and all, not immigration, but uh, the embassy of China and the U.S. embassy. I got my visa at the last hour, almost. Wow, wow, that's that's wonderful. But then, then can we know the name of of the friend who introduced you to Apostle? Yes, his uh, name is Apostle Doctor Timothy Anderson King. So, lastly, after the program. What encounter did you have with God? How, how, how does it feel? I still find myself crying because of the raw presence that I experienced during this whole visit. I found myself crying because there is nothing that I've done or that I can do that would warrant the experience or the uh, presence of God and one of the things touched me, and I was caught off guard. I'm always kind of knowing things, but when Apostle Courage Kobe Seawolf 
prayed for me and presented me with the ambassadorship to over here and presented me with a humanitarian award and uh, the embracement was second to none. It was a force to be reckoned with in that prayer to anoint me and then prophesy in my life some things that God had showed him that God had already told me. It was confirmation. I got confirmation, but that confirmation in the anointing and praying over my life for where God is leading me and what God is leading me to do and for the kingdom of God, it, it, it just left me speechless. It left me tearless and it left me speechless. I've personally known Apostle Karich Kovisa for so many years now and he's a man with a good heart. Yes. And whatever God needs him to do, that is what he does. Yes. Apostle Karich Kovisa would like to say God richly bless you for the lives you are changing and touching. So your last words, before, before your last words, you have been a music producer, a musician yourself for the past 46 and a half years. 46 and a half years, which means we are close to the 47 year. Yes. How many albums do you have so far? I have two albums that I've recorded. I, I have a third um, project that I'm releasing, but I've recorded with my music with several other people on uh, several other uh, uh, albums or with other artists in the U.S. That's great. Wow, I'm inspired. Oh, oh Dr. Charles, sorry, um, Ambassador Dr. <laughs> Charles Diggins, all the way from the United States of America, Alabama State, to be precise. Yes, Thank you so much for coming on. God our bless show. you. I will be back. Sure. Can't, can't wait back. to see you back. back. Can't yeah. wait to see you back. Thank yes. you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Now, before we finally sign out, what are your words of encouragement for the upcoming gospel musicians in the world? Study the word of God. Keep the word in your mouth. Pray, fast, and wait on God and let God lead you. You don't have to do anything that's ungodly to get to where God wants you to be. If you do it right, when you get there, you can stay no matter how the wind blows. No matter how the storm comes, you can stand. And if they kick you out of one place, God will open up another place for you. And that's, that's opening up a whole nother testimony. God shut some doors and he opened in the United States and God opened some doors over here in Africa for me. That's the kind of God we serve. For coming to Ghana and to Prophetic Voice Chapel International, Praise the Lord. to be precise. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Love you, man. See you soon. Thank you so much for watching this episode. If you want to support us, I will leave our contacts in the description box below. You can either support us in kind or cash. If you have any product you want to advertise, don't hesitate to call the numbers on your screen. Before I sign out, this show was brought to you by JPixel Studios, Juzan Glam, and Matt Concept. Kindly follow us and subscribe to this channel as well.